metres away from the easel, but sufficient a distance to show us what happens when we add body of air between where we paint and the subject we're painting. What happens to the four properties of that bucket? All subjects have these properties. The property of saturation or colour is diminished. The property of texture is diminished. The property of clarity is diminished. And the property of lightness is diminished. In fact, what really happens is, it's like a fog enveloping the area between there and there. The further we go, the greyer. The further we go, the lighter it becomes. And that's what happens. That's how we put perspective into a painting. We're painting on a flat surface, so we need to apply perspective. We need to adjust those properties so it fits reality. And how do we do it to the bucket? Or how do we do it to any object? Well, we simply make those adjustments to those four properties. Let me show you how we do it. If I look at that bucket through my camera, the zoom on my camera will show me that diminution of colour, of lightness, of texture and of detail. It will show it. Here on this split image, the image to the right is how we see it in front of me, close up. The image to the left is how it appears at a distance. Notice how the colour is greyed off, how the detail is diminished, how the entire effect is simply one of a fog, a layer of grey. And we can see it here in reality. This is down to park, not far from here but it shows how with distance applied, colours simply grey off, how the yellows disappear, the reds disappear, and we're left with a distance, a colour that's identifiably a distance colour, and that is blue. And everything, it doesn't matter what subject we put between us here and at a distance, it will undergo this mutation, it'll undergo this change. It's fundamental to painting. So how do we get that effect of a haze, that effect of a fog um, enveloping the object at a great distance? Well, let me tell you something. Something out of the kitchen sort of replicates the same effect. This is greaseproof paper. It's semi-opaque. It allows about 70% of light to transmit through it. And I've put a little bit over this bucket here just to show what happens when light is broken down, when it's diminished by simply the particles of air, the gas molecules, the dust, the water vapour that rests in suspension in the air. How it breaks down that intensity of colour. Of course, straightly, directly above us here, the atmosphere is quite thin compared to the atmosphere at a great distance towards the horizon of, say, eight miles. We're looking through a great big blanket of air, which is dense in all those molecules and dust particles and water vapour and so on. So that has the effect of diminishing the significance and the drama of those four properties that we spoke about earlier. So here, the highlight, of course, will be tuned down a couple of notches. The, the deep shadow areas under the bucket, they'll actually be lightened up a little bit. It'll be greyed off. There'll be less clarity there. And likewise, the colour will also be diminished in terms of its hue or its intensity. So, the question is, how do we as artists replicate that same effect with our paint and our strokes? Well, it's quite simple. Let's take this off. That's the effect we want to achieve, okay? Let's take it off now and see what we in fact had. And remember, that bucket colour and its detail and its properties as it sat just here were real to me because I d took directly from that, that bucket its colours and its hue and its intensity and detail. Now, so, how are we going to do it with this, with this bucket now? How are we going to get the effect of that haze? Let's have a look at it. Now, there's two ways of doing this. I'm going to show you the first way. The first way is really replicating what that bit of paper did for me a moment ago. It was a cool grey. If I really look at that paper, that's what it was. And it was about a value or a tone on a scale of 10 of about a 5 or a 6. So if I mix that up with this blue and a bit of red I've got here, close to what that paper was, and sort of just paint it over, surely I'll get the effect of distance. Well, yep, that's exactly what I'm doing. And you know what? It works. And you know what? 
you can do it to any painting that you need to apply distance to. So it's a sure and ready and certain technique. Just add a fair bit of turps to it, a lot of thinner, and keep on just washing it over the other colours. It's a little bit like doing watercolours, because in watercolours we use washes and multiple washes. Well here we're really using a watercolour technique and we're applying it to an oil paint. And of course you can. Of all the techniques which is very forgiving, it's oil painting which is perhaps the most forgiving. And it's also the medium which has got all that richness to it. And you could put that wash over that surface area there on the bucket. And you know what? You're going to get just that lovely little nuance of suggestion of distance. The old technique of glazing that the old masters used is based on this technique of a wash bedded into a medium and then simply applied over a previous layer of paint. We're doing the same thing, but our object here is simply to achieve the effect of distance, to grey off and tone back those properties that we spoke about that we see in a very close object. So is this achieving the effect? Well, yes, it is. Because, again, I'm taking the greyness and I'm trying to paint on a flat surface the illusion of perspective. I'm trying to trick the eyes into believing there's distance on a flat surface. Now think about that. Distance on a flat surface, it's really a contrast in concept there. Because how can we create distance on a flat surface? Well, the theory or the phenomena of what we're doing here is simply that. We've taken from reality, we've viewed it through the lens, with the bucket over by the fence, we've viewed it over the park area, we've viewed it in the mountains, and we're taking that effect, that phenomena, and applying it to the flat surface here by simply using a wash. And that's one of the magics of painting. And it's these little rules and these little well, they're not little rules and they're not uh, minor discoveries either. They're not minor innovations. It took centuries for this knowledge to develop and then for it to be accepted and then for it to be embraced and then for it to become part of the entire knowledge and bank of information that we use to paint accurately and to paint faithfully. So even under the handle there, I'm adding some grey. Now, what was the grey? I mixed light red and cobalt blue, the two colours that I originally started with. Together, they break down to form a very nice neutral grey, and that's what I did. And I kept the grey not on the warm side, but on the cool side, because distance gives us that blue effect, that blue haze. So I needed to create a grey on the blue side, and that's what I did. And did it work? Well, yes, it did, because that bucket now has lost all its clarity, has lost its drama, has lost all the essential properties that gave it the, the fierceness and the importance of the bucket as it was just by me. As it's retreated a distance, it becomes more subdued. It's more of a tamed monster, my little bucket.